Ladies and gentlemen, it is time to return to the Eagle. But however, it's a, uh, well, it has no clutch. It has no brakes and I'm trying to drive it in here. So, you know, I just started it in gear and was trying, it didn't really work for me. Well, it's in here finally. It, it wasn't easy. Basically we pushed it in. We need to put a clutch master cylinder on this car because it doesn't have one. I don't know how they got it off. Somewhere down below that master cylinder is the clutch master cylinder. I know this because I can go in here, open it up. See that hole right there? That is where the clutch master cylinder would go and the clutch is not hooked to anything. When I say there's no room, I mean there's no room to do anything. So I'm thinking I'm going to pull the brake booster off just so I can see what I'm doing. So that master cylinder is out of production. It has been forever. So what I did is hopped on old Speedway and bought a Willwood Universal Clutch Master Cylinder and Reservoir Kit and a Slave Cylinder and a Line and some other things. And I'm going to attempt to make that work in here. I'm going to tear out this lower dash piece here just for a little extra room up by that clutch pedal and then hopefully I can get to the brake booster bolts and get that out of the way and we could try to do this properly. We got all this crap laying here. I don't know what all this is. This looks like a bushing for something that they hacked through. I really haven't even been into this car at all. There's all kinds of stuff. There's the ignition cylinder. Oh, they cut the side of the column off. What? Why? They cut through it. These are not hard to remove. Why would you do that? But just like most vehicles that you buy out of scrapyards, there's going to be a lot of unmessing of literally everything they touched. Ooh, a dime. Making it back, making it back. What year? What year? 2001. Boring. It looks like there's just this one screw holding the entire thing together, which is... Well, pretty much the norm for me, too, so whoever put this together, you know, we might be related. I'm going to pull this little center console out, which is okay, because I think I need to adjust the shifter as well. Got the screw. There we go. What does this do? Ah, no. Hmm. Definitely a girl's car. Or a hippie's car. <laughs> Ooh! Dang, look at this oil filter wrench. Oh, wow. That's nice. Was that in the car? Yeah, it was under the console. Yeah, it's got the dash piece out. And uh, that is an alarming amount of rat turds. I mean, my goodness. There's uh, there's disease just everywhere in here. And actually, it kind of looks better without that dash piece. As we dig into this, there's going to be all kinds of things we can remove like this factory ECM thing for the stepper motor and the electronically controlled carburetor it would have had. Uh, goodbye. And all associated wiring. My goal here is to clean this thing up as simple as possible. And the budget is kind of opened up on this one. I'm willing to, uh, you know, I'm willing to spend a little bit for this guy. That is a still living, de oh, dead baby mouse. Wait, yeah. you just died? No, oh, it's still alive. Ew. On a less disgusting note, there's the brake and clutch pedal pads and some hardware. I'm hoping there's some little Crosby clips there. All kinds of, I mean, the wiring in this thing is butchered. Bad news, bad news. So I'm missing the clutch pedal push rod, and that's a, that's a problem. Uh, you never want to see that, so hopefully it's in here somewhere. That would be really cool. I don't see it anywhere, though. We're probably up a creek. This thing is so vile and disgusting, I'm actually going to vacuum it out before I crawl in here too much. <laughs> well, she was hiding a little rust. See how this is bent up like this? I think that's a loader fork that hit it right on top of the frame rail. Didn't hit the frame rail, it just hit the floor. It's very lucky. I'm gonna take the seats out of it, and let's just 
strip this baby down and fix the floors up and patch it up a little bit, treat them and put it back together and, you know, just try to do it the right way. Ish. All right, where do the seats bolt into this thing? Oh, there ain't no way in hell any of this is coming out. Color me impressed. I love how AMC just used random bits of scrap metal to brace the seats into the car. They were they're literally like the backyard car builder of car manufacturers, which is why I love them. How on earth are you supposed to get to that? Uh, see, now we see the downfall, the downside of an AMC vehicle. <laughs> well, they are built like they're built out of someone's backyard. This thing had these little pulley things bolted to the seat brackets for some reason. It had two of them. I'm sure the reason for that will become clear as we move on. I hope. Probably good pulling these out. The only way to actually clean this thing. <laughs> Somebody's had a, a home in here for a while. Well, got the seat out. Got the seat belts out. Still got to pull the uh, shoulder harnesses out the bottom, but... Dude, let me look at this stuff. Ugh. <laughs> Ooh. Who wants to go to Pizza Hut? And cigarette butts. Mmm. Gross. Definitely going to vacuum this out before we uh, try to yank that. But I'm keeping the carpet. We'll save it, because it looks fine. It just needs a good... Good, thorough cleaning. Alright, JD's in here and he's gonna start vacuuming. But, first we gotta pick up, like there's two spare tire covers in here. A bunch of random carpet insulation. That's the correct spare tire. Eagle GT lift rack. But it also had this one. Not sure why. It also had this roll of random carpet in it and an incorrect bottom part of a back seat. So we still need a back seat. We can get this carpet insulation out of here. Jute padding stuff. We don't really need that. And I'm aware of it looks like it has plenty of sound deadener in it. Yeah. Unless it was supposed to go back here, but even this is all done in sound deadener factory. Oh, another back seat belt right there. It just keeps falling out. Stuff keeps dumping out of it. Uh, no, I'll leave those on. I wonder if this stuff went behind those. Probably. Like in there, yeah. probably. But, regardless, before we try to move that carpet, we're definitely cleaning it out. So, yeah. you hit that side with the vacuum, and then I'll hit uh, the other side. Are we rich? Huh? Are we rich? Yes. Lots 30 of cents. Money. Cleans up pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> Bad? We're gonna have to vacuum again? Yeah. Okay. Come on. Mm. Oh. Huh. Pretty solid other than yeah. the one. Still probably need to clean under here. Definitely. I mean. Might as well. We're this far, right? I got it. Okay. Yeah, we can clean that up. Yeah, dude, I think we take this up to the car wash. Yeah. Get it clean. And then... And then put it back in. Nice yeah. and totally clean. I mean, it's pretty bad over there. Hello. Huh. There's a hole cut in the floor. Oh.
No, this side's solid as be. Really good, actually. Wait, this obviously needs replaced. Yeah. Should we just rip it all out? Yeah, start? just rip it all out. Well, actually, maybe not. <laughs> really? It's pretty well attached. I wonder what that holds. Yeah, the slave cylinder. <laughs> you can get right to it through that hole. Leave it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. Well, we'll make a little access door for yeah. it or something. Well, this side comes good. out pretty good, but the floor is excellent. Yeah. I mean, it's in really good shape. I can't believe it was sitting at a junkyard and it's mm -hmm. fine. Oh, it was all the way back. It's all one piece. It's also under these panels, too. Yeah. Good enough. We'll leave the rest. Dang, that's really not bad. No, this baby's solid as a freaking brick, dude. Yeah. It's in good shape. Really good shape. Yeah. Well, we're out here for another night, ah. and now that we got this baby all cleaned out, kind of, let's uh, let's see what we can do about this clutch master cylinder. I did discover something. I ran the numbers on the VIN, and in the fifth spot of this VIN, there's a K. K means automatic, so that means this is not an original stick shift car. Which is kind of verified by the giant ragged hole in the tunnel. But, what does that mean? Does that mean, I don't know, what, uh, what kind of, <laughs> what kind of mess do we got in here? Why did they have to do that? Um, the mystery continues. I'm going to start by uh, pulling this brake booster out. Because I already know that's something I'm going to need to do. And I'm kind of looking up in here at the... What? Is it that door? Yes, master cylinder. We don't gotta probably remove it. We just need to move it out of our way. So, man, I'm looking at this hole though for the clutch master cylinder, and that's a factory hole, I, as far as I can tell. Anyway, that doesn't mean it wasn't stamped there to begin with, and. They just kind of added it in, but I'm like, I'm not seeing a lot of, I mean, even like the, the uh, clutch safety, you know, push the clutch in to start it, the old switch thing. That is there and like looks right. I mean, I don't know. It's weird. You know, you're in for a good time on a job when there's already a socket pre-installed for you left behind. Every bolt was loose except for one out of four so far, and I still got to get these two. Boy, what a bear! There's the hole we're shooting for right there. And the master cylinder is right on top of it. Now that socket up that's on there seems to be getting the job done. Normally I'd ask more questions, but you know what they say about not looking gift horses in the ass. Go on. Or it's rounded. No, she come right off. The brakes actually work reasonably well in this. I would prefer not to disconnect them. No oh boy. God dang, they got enough crap in here? I mean, good lord. Who put this together? Dr. Frankenstein? Damn, all right, I'm gonna take the master cylinder off of the booster and just have a big hole there. Well, I got it out, except for Half of the booster came with it. That was supposed to stay behind, but it, it came with it. I don't know if that's gonna go back in there. Should be fine, right? As long as it seals-ish, I mean, as long as this rubber's good, looks fine. I don't, really don't wanna buy a booster for this. We'll clean it up and try to send it, I think. Well, now we can get to the hole. Not that hole, that hole. And, uh, yeah, it's in relatively bad shape down there. It looks like they tore half of it open trying to put it in. Uh, whoever put this together was a royal dumbass, so, I mean, I'm not going to put too much stock into what they did. There's a line right there. 
I ordered a new one of those, though. We'll probably change that out. That one feels pretty stuck. Uh, we have a little bit of a hiccup here. So here's the Wilwood, Wildwood, whatever, uh, master cylinder I bought. And the fitting in it is different than the line for the car. And I should have known this. I think somebody told me about that. But, I mean, it will work. I'll just have to get some kind of adapter, I think. They, they usually have master cylinder adapters. Take that 3 16ths up to this quarter inch line. I think that's what it is. I can tell you, it ain't going to bolt in there. Numb Nuts decided to rip the whole bottom of that out of there. Freaking morons. I mean, I'm a butcher, but, you know, at least stuff works when I get done with it. I'm not getting a welder anywhere near there because we got a fuel leak somewhere in here. I, I've smelled it this whole time. Uh, just terrible varnished fuel. Um, so I'd. I'm definitely not I'm, not, I'm not making a bunch of sparks or we go kaboomy. If you can believe it, O'Reilly actually had the right fitting. A 3 16 2 quarter inch adapter. It's a little uh, goofy, but it'll get the job done. You can really tell what a home grown ass thing this is. Look up here, they've got bolt holes drilled crooked to mount the thing like crooked. Uh, that's not how the hydraulics typically like to function. They kind of like to be up and down so the air can get out of them when you bleed them. So I'm going to end up having to drill one hole. Thankfully they did me the courtesy of tearing the hell out of that bottom part there. I kind of straightened it out the best I could. But as it is, I'm going to have to, because of this, the way this comes out at a 45 instead of straight, which is why you don't order parts ahead of time and you see what you need first. But, you know, when you do YouTube thing, you gotta try to plan ahead and get burnt many a time. It will sit flush, but it's hitting the corner of this wire harness bulkhead right here. So we're gonna uh, trim that corner off there. It'll give us just enough room to bolt this up. And it is the holes in the right spot for the clutch pedal. So it'll be nice and straight, and I may even, you know, massage that fender apron over here just a hair to kind of, you know, give us a little more room. I removed this bulkhead connector, and I took, I made two snips on it right here to kind of know where we need to trim it. But if I took it off, I was able to see how much I had to work with, and I can actually cut quite a bit of meat off here. So just for the added clearance, I'm going to go ahead and probably remove this entire corner. Massage the apron a little. What? I mean, look at this jungle gym of, of this rat's nest. It's like freaking ragu in here, man. Well, here's what I'm working with. I managed to drill a couple of holes. I'm not going to show you because I don't think it's coming back out. But I got it bolted in still, but the bolts are in it and it's relatively level and straight. It's as good as I can make it. Uh, so now we got to clearance that bulkhead fitting, but let's go ahead and bolt that sucker in tight so she don't run away on us. Well, the good news is I'm pretty sure I just ran a drill bit right into the back of the fuse box. That's good. Uh, let's see. So that bottom bolt, no, they are both through the firewall sheet metal, barely. I wish there was more room in here, but just freaking barely. So. I managed to get away from all that torn up metal and well this is as good as it was going to get. A couple of washers and we'll probably move this fuse box just for convenience sake. Then we've got to make a push rod to go from here to here. You going to help me tighten that down tomorrow? Yes. Okay, Because I can't get on the nut of the bolts on this side mm -hmm. and tighten the other side. There's like zero room on either one. I can't even jam a wrench in it. So. We'll do yeah. it. Yeah. We're going to go ahead and bolt the master cylinder, or the clutch master cylinder on, but before we do that, I'm going to go ahead and completely rebuild this brake booster. Because if we're taking it apart, and like I said, I'm actually kind of going the extra mile with this little guy here, because, well, it is actually a dream car of mine, so we will we'll take our time and try to do things nice. Maybe not right, but nice. You can get a wrench down right here. See these two bolts here? Yep. They're kind of a bitch, but you can get a 
wrench on there just to hold them. I'm going to just use the impact and try to zip them on quick. Okay. Oh, it, I slid. All right. All right, with JD's help, I was able to get it on there. So, it's a little crooked, but whatever. So, we will go ahead and probably put the line on it and then try to put that electrical bulkhead back in. Kind of works. You can kind of see right there that there's just barely enough room with that bend. However, we got another problem, which is down here. You can see the old line going in right there. And the new one doesn't quite make it. Well, I figured out why the uh, oil pan leaks. It's the drain plug is stripped. Oh, the four-wheel drive actuator is disconnected. That's good. So that doesn't work for sure. I don't think that looks like a Jeep or a AMC Eagle transfer case myself, but I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. But anyway, what we're here for is a slave cylinder. Somebody's made this little extension line off of it and uh, that's what we're here for. We're just going to go ahead and remove the slave cylinder so we can get this little piece of line they made and that'll connect it to the uh, hose we bought. They didn't want to make anything too easy to do on this, I can tell you that. Oh shoot. I grabbed the wrong size. Will you give me a short half inch on a 3 8 drive. Okay, uh, this sucks. <laughs> oh, nice exhaust. Oh my god. Okay, well anyway, it's definitely taking a trip to the exhaust shop. I found the piece of the floor they cut out up there. Still don't know why they did that. It doesn't seem to have helped them do anything. Now well, they got her out of the car, you kind of Hook your peepers on there a little bit better. So I did order the right slave cylinder. That's nice. But uh, this little, you know, jumper with this sketchy ass flare fitting connecting it. That's that's what we need. Uh, but other than that, this is all pretty much the same sort of deal here. <laughs> I don't know if that's coming out of there. Well, jumping straight to vice grips here, and because somebody's already manhandled it. Hmm. That's what the new vice grips are for. These are nice. I got these at the farm and home for seven bucks. Haven't even had a chance to use them yet. I'm sure they're awful, like all Chinese vice grips, but did you know vice grip vice grips are also Chinese vice grips now? What? <laughs> It instantly broke that loose. Those weren't even budging it. They were slipping. Huh. I'm going to go buy every pair they got. You, so you put this in and it should fit tight like this uh -huh. against the clutch fork. Yep. And then whenever you give it pressure, it oh. whenever you hit the yeah. clutch, it pushes this out. That's right. That's right. That's why that one's stuck in oh, because yeah. it sat there forever. Oh, that's a compression fitting. That's why. They were stupid. Well, I went ahead and ran up to O'Reilly there, and I was really hoping to get just a female union fitting, but uh, I couldn't get one. They didn't have one. So I bought another compression fitting, which I hate, but we will do what we gotta do. So basically, we're just gonna make the same thing uh, out of a new piece of tube and a new nut for it, and uh, we'll make a, a brand new one to use. And just extend this a little bit and call it good. Back out here today, I've got this random piece of quarter inch brake line here. And we're just gonna kind of duplicate what they had already made right here. Put uh, one new fitting on one end, and then on the other end, we will use a compression fitting and attach it to the new brake line I got here, or new clutch master cylinder. I have there and extended that way again not my preferred way to do it but I don't feel like waiting around for them to get me a female union so now I've got this on here to the point where it won't fall back off but I can still rotate it 
we want to make sure we get our clocking right here. So I'm going to wait to crank it all the way down until we're installed and then we'll know where it needs to be at least. Way down in there. See the wire harness bulkhead? It's back and bolted up. And there's just enough room to still be able to tighten this down, which I will do before mounting the brake booster, which there is just enough room to mount the brake booster. I'm running into more another problem here, which is this is for the external reservoir, right? And I guess it'll be okay here, but that's not gonna work because fluid no travel up, right? So if I if I mount this guy like I was hoping to, like, I don't know, like there would be good, right? Uh, I don't think it'll work because there it won't. Fluid not go up, fluid go down. I, I don't know. It would be higher than the master cylinder, so maybe, but I think it'd end up with air in it. I'd never get it out. I couldn't get one with a regular, in, you know, integrated master or reservoir. There's no room. How would you ever fill it? So I might go to like over here, like where these uh, di diagnostic ports are. So other than all the other glaring issues everywhere, what our next big problem is, is obviously we got to hook up the master cylinder to the clutch pedal, you know? So whenever you push the clutch, it does stuff. And um, it didn't come with one. Of course, it, it's just an $85. You know, master cylinder. Why? Why would it come with anything? Anyway, I'm gonna try to make something here. Give me a second to come up with something, and I'll show you what I'm doing. You've seen me do it before on the Road Runner. All right, here's my game plan. I found this, which I bought with the master cylinder. You know, because they make three eighths fine thread push rods, but not five sixteenths ones. You know, from the same company I bought this from. Anyway, I'm gonna kind of get this pedal where I think it'll be, which will be just slightly above the brake pedal probably. So it has this heim joint in the end of it, right? Well, it doesn't fit, but if I think if I knock out the heim part of the heim joint, it will fit. If we put her about right here, we're gonna chop off about, let's go ahead and say three fingers off the end of this. So we're gonna shorten this tube three fingers. About yay much. Go ahead and throw this on the tape measure here. Oh, about right there, looks good. Well, I just learned the hard way that that was not a hollow tube. Uh, it's solid in the middle. However, it's not necessarily a bad thing. I can drill that, and we could just tap it for 5 16ths, 24, and that would actually be better in the long run. Well, I'm not sure how one usually removes a heim joint, a heim from a heim joint. I don't think that's something that happens all that often. But for whatever reason, as is usually the case, my mind immediately goes to large hammer. Interesting. This is where safety glasses would probably be smart. I guess I can try cutting it out. I can't imagine anything going wrong here, which is why I got my eye protection on, of course. What I'm going to try to do is kind of roll this heim joint out to where it sticks out some. And I'm going to try to hold it with this screwdriver while simultaneously holding the entire thing while operating a cutoff wheel inches from my fingers. This is dumb by my standards. Hot. I'm getting their focus camera. Do it now. I managed to cut the thing in half, but it still won't come out of there. I don't really know what to do. Finally did it. And now the hole is way too big, but that's okay. We'll just make a bushing or something for it. This drill's easier than I thought it would. So I'm going to drill that out. Obviously it's totally dead center. No issues whatsoever. And then we'll step her up to a 930 seconds bit. Then we'll run a tap through it. And uh, then it should just thread right on. Right? No? Look at the forbidden confetti. Well I managed to burn the hell out of myself. 
uh, by touching that because after drilling it it's very hot you know go figure I'm tapping this my preferred way which is hammer a socket onto the tap and then be able to ratchet it so when you tap something you just want to go till it don't want to go no more and then back it off preferably you have a more stable surface than I do let me tighten it up I'm going to do this and repeat until I get at least half of that tap in there. Have JD pull off some brackets and crap that were up here. And I'll probably still remove some of this junk, but this seems to be the best spot to mount this, which I think is where the original one went. So that's what we're going to do. We'll just shoot some self-tappers through the firewall to mount that and call it a day. <laughs> this? What does this do? That was probably heater control or something? Optional. Optional. Vacuum hoses. Optional. Optional. These are melted, so clearly optional. Yeah. What the hell is this? Again, nobody knows. Alright, well here's a big old lot of crap. That's a diagnostic port of some sort. They got all this crap running to the AC compressor, which we'll probably just use an aftermarket AC compressor when we get to that, because I do want to put air conditioning on this one. Like this. What the hell is this? Oh, that's for the original ignition control module, which we do not need. It can go bye-bye. Hey, look, a fuel filter, a fuel filter with a return line going to the return line over there. Hmm. This is garbage, otherwise known as a Motorcraft ignition box. Guaranteed to be bad at everything you own. You can tell it's definitely authentic AMC and not Motorcraft. See, they put a sticker on it and that makes it AMC. Anyway, now we can hack out even more garbage, which is always a plus. I don't know what this is. It's some sort of headlight relay or something. That's a fuel pressure regulator. Mr. Gasket, so you know it's good. You see all these bare hanging out wires? That's what you want. Well, yeah, obviously. See, for an electric choke, you want 12 volts with the key on, right? So what they did instead in their total infinite ridic <sighs> wisdom. Oh wait, no, it doesn't run inside of there. It goes somewhere else. Let's, where does it go? Hmm? Somewhere down there. When there is literally a factory electric choke wire right there. <laughs> that probably has power on it. What's this? Apparently nothing. Goodbye. Oops. Let's hook the battery up and make sure any of this crap still works. So, remember this computer I showed you earlier? Right here. I think a lot of that wiring is coming from this stupid thing. I mean, a quite a bit of it is. And this does nothing at all. So, goodbye. I hope there's nothing that completes the circuit in here. Gently remove all this stuff. Oh, well, yeah. All this to run what is effectively a stepper motor in the back of the carburetor. It weighs like two ounces. <laughs> Gotta love 1980s tech. Come on. All this crap here is the vacuum line signal wires for the cruise control. And so is this. Because this car actually had factory cruise control. But I'm not going to trust my life to... 50 year old cruise control, so we'll get that out of here and again maybe replace it with a modern unit. But what's this? What does the other half go to? Nothing, literally nothing. And what does this do? Hmm? Where do you go? Oh, to this giant relay that serves what purpose? Headlights? But there's nothing in it that draws enough to need a relay. That goes inside the car somewhere. There we go. 
See, the good thing is, I'll just rewire the whole car if I have to, because there's nothing to it. It literally takes three wires to make an old car run. There. Pulls out easier the other way. Maybe. Got spast. Ah. 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 Help. You need a factory AMC cruise control module? Too bad. It's got a lot more room now. It already looks so much better, and I haven't even like cleaned anything up. Just hack all the crap out of here. Look, duct tape. Oh god. That's you know that could be factory. So I just made new holes with self-tappers where they should have been. I'm gonna just, you know, go ahead and shoot a self-tapper in it and screw it to the firewall. Let's check the hood fitment on that before I drill the other one. Okay. I left the hood thing. I think it clears. Bare. Okay. Actually, I don't think it does. But, does it matter? <laughs> you think it will just squish down? I think it probably will just squish down. Yeah. It's real close. God, what a tin can. I really don't want to bolt everything back together until I know that, you know, it works. So I don't have to take it all back apart. Everything they supply doesn't really work with the stuff they give you. Not a fan of this at all. I kind of went out of my way to buy good stuff for once, and like every other time I've bought good stuff, it's no better than the cheapy crap. I mean, it was only $35 for this piece of plastic and a hose, so why would they give you a hose clamp? That's That would be just... How, why would I even expect that tough spot I got here, but work with what you got, I suppose. JD's going to help me bleed this clutch. And hopefully we'll be able to call that finished and I can put this thing back together, sort of. So what you're going to do uh -huh. is just get in there. I have, so, oh, I forgot the push rod isn't hooked up up. Yeah. Like it's it's just sitting on there, so make sure it doesn't pop off. Okay. Get in there and look, you'll see. All right. See how that ring is just sitting on that, on it? This thing? Yeah. Okay, yeah. So just make sure it doesn't fall off. All right. But you, we're just gonna do the down up thing. Okay. So I'll open it, you push it down, and then. All right? Yeah, that's fine. Hit it a few times. Let's get some fluid here. All right, let's do that again. Okay. Oh, there's a lot. You're gonna have to use your foot. Ooh, lots of fluid. Is it supposed to be that milky white fluid? Definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> that's really gross. Yeah, no, that's really weird. It's brand new. I don't know what that would be. All right, go down. Down. Up. Up. Down. Down. Ugh. All right, hit that clutch. Let's show them how it works. Oh, hang See? on. Let me get it with my foot. Yeah, do it with your foot. Push. Let off. Push. Let off. Hell yeah. See that? cylinder is actuating the clutch fork which is releasing the throw out bearing which will let the clutch do clutch things and the car will move now. Well now that we got a working clutch JD had to split but I'm gonna go ahead and throw the booster back on get that uh, clutch pedal rod permanently attached. I guess I ought to feel that and see what it feels like. Looked like it was working okay for him though. Oh it's excellent. Perfect. Well, we need a little bit of a bushing uh, here because there's some slop in that rod and the little pin it sits on on the pedal. So I'm just going to install this do-it-yourself bushing kit. 
electrical tape makes kind of a bushing and that cotter key is barely going to hold that on there but you know at least we know where to go when it falls off so i'm leaving it for now because we can come back and fix that later I'm gonna do a contortionist deal to get into this one goodness i may only get three of these nuts on but at least they'll be tight before it only had one tight one see improvements no crampo just get around all the spaghetti that's in here god damn it we're all back in shape now and my god it's a tight fit in here i mean there's no room for anything but it's done and it works probably maybe still got lots of this crap to clean up and uh, i got a new starter solenoid coming uh a couple other odds and ends got a new carburetor coming in my efforts to clean up the wiring which i did completely low key I, it, the fuel pump no longer works the distributor the coil has no power i ruined it but have no fear we will find new ways to do this where we probably ought to start is get power back to that coil and that's easy enough we're just going to look for something one of these many many wires in here that has 12 volts with the key on that's all we really care about then we can move on to the fuel pump which is going to require a relay However, and I'm guessing there probably was one in here, or it's this. I don't really know. I, got, I don't even know where the fuel pump is. Oh, look, it's got power. Perfect. So whatever the hell that thing is, is what is now our power wire. And I'm just going to strip this back. Cause I, I really, I really hate this. Key on. Solenoid that doesn't work tries to work. I don't know. We got running lights still. Wipers. Oh, yes, we got wipers. The beautiful blue bell light still works. Still works. So, literally, none of that did anything. Good thing about ripping all the wiring out of cars, you wind up with a bunch of excess wire. This plug here is actually the right kind of plug to plug into the coil. Well, I've tracked down the fuel pump, and it's actually an in-tank fuel pump. It looks like a newer gas tank, too. That's pretty cool. So they did that right, and then ran this wire all along the fuel line, all the way up here to the front of the car, which I'll probably leave because it seems to work. Listen, listen, here, here. It do the thing. So like I, when you guys saw the video of the car the first time, everyone's like, oh, it's a 4.2. No, no, it's not. This is a 4.0, okay? You know, I know that is there's no mechanical fuel pump provision on the engine. So we have to use an electric fuel pump, which is why there's a fuel pressure regulator on it. So I robbed this relay wiring harness, nice pre-made thing, off of the uh, fog light bar that I had on that Mercury Grand Marquis, which if you haven't seen those videos, go check them out. You know, so I cut up this like $200 light bars <laughs> thing for a $10 relay harness. Basically, you got power, fused power, preferably ground and then this little tiny red wire here is going to be to keyed power so when you turn the key on it goes turns on that right five minute job slap this baby in here shoot a self tapper into it right here and then we know where our uh, fuel pump relay is so where we're going to get our keyed power is just going to be right off of the starter solenoid which I'm replacing so this really is gonna be undone anyway but for the time being we can at least get it set up make sure everything works and call it good that burned that that lit that on fire holy cow fuel pumpage all right well we're back in business turn the key on it works so maybe we see if we can fire it up and drive it off of the stands here. It's going to be kind of difficult considering that I can't start it with the key, thanks to China. But let's see what we can do. All right, first let's turn the key on. Well, vice grips on. Pump it. Once two. I need to be able to work the gas and, and crank. Of course, I have no gas, and all I have is this broken can of starting fluid. Oh, let's 
see what that did. Well, is this thing even showing fuel pressure? Oh yeah, five and a half pounds. Let's see if that should be enough to get this fuck to do something. Man, if I could just work the damn gas, I think it probably would you could probably get it to start. Let's give it permanent gas. Hmm, how do I wedge this in here to make it? I don't want all of the gas, just some of the gas. You see it? You see it? It moved. Barely. And that's good enough for me for now. Obviously it needs a whole lot of work. <laughs> well, afraid I'm gonna have to call this one right there. Uh, obviously, we got a long ways to go with this thing yet, but huge progress. We got a clutch. It moved. It felt fine. Uh, I mean, it. I started letting it out and it started trying to drive off these ramps on an incline. So, I'll call that good enough. That's as good as it's going to get for right now, because uh, we got to get back on the Roadrunner. But you are going to see more of this, because I need to build this, because I need a driver. And this is going to be my daily driver at some point. Make sure you guys are liking the videos, commenting, commenting, and, you know, checking them all out. Uh, hit the notifications if you don't mind, and that really helps out a big time, too. All this stuff is just for the YouTube algorithm, all right? This is not like me personally asking you please do this stuff it's really not it's just when you're a smaller channel not that we're like tiny but we're nowhere near the big dogs you got to do what you can to try to get that engagement going and you guys have done a hell of a good job on that like the last three or four videos they've been pretty good pretty good and that keeps us up on the algorithm keeps us growing and you guys really make the difference don't forget, you could join the Low Buck Club right below the video and become a sponsor of this channel for 99 cents a month. It's as cheap as I could make it, but I'd rather have 500 people paying 99 cents a month than screwing a half a dozen people out of 10 bucks. I, I, that's just the way I prefer to do it. And it keeps the kind of the corporate stuff out of the videos, uh, you know, and just kind of keeps us on a regular guy level. You know, this stuff is not cheap, and I think anybody watching will realize just how much time and money is getting invested into this channel. Nothing on the grand scheme of things like compared to the big guys, but still quite a bit for a regular Joe who's still working a full-time job. And have a good one. See you next time on Pull Barn Garage with the Real Budget YouTube channel where we will shoestring anything together. Mm -hmm.